terminator against anything that's not uh, of love. Be a terminator. Be back. Come on back for that. To destroy all hatefulness. Uh, we need forgiveness. Forgiveness and love are the same thing. And people need to open their uh, hearts unto love. It's a loveless world, and we have to be the uh, change that we really need to see. And uh, let that truth sink in, because the Lord is now sending forth an ocean of his adoration for all that can receive it. So welcome to the scroll of the seventy. Uh, now, if you're not well read of the Word of God, uh, there was not 12 uh, uh, disciples, there were 82. <laughs> there were another 70 disciples aside from the uh, main core. And uh, uh, most people have never heard anything about these, but uh, I'm going to give you their names uh, coming up uh, soon. And uh, because their names have been recorded by historians. So if you really want to know who they are, stick around. It's really not relevant uh, who or what they were. They were just loving people following the road of love. And they were um, determined that they were going to follow Christ on the, the path of love and peace that he was showing them because they had a... a and our witness that his truth was truth and that it could bring peace on earth and goodwill towards men because it was straight from heaven and that his word would pave the way so that um, you know there's nothing on earth that cannot be healed by heaven and his was heaven's word the velvety voice of uh, uh, our splendor, our star of stars, our uh, celestial, terrestrial, uh, maker of all, whether imagined or real. And um, has he allowed some imagined to be uh, understood? Yes. The Word of God says he allows men to choose their delusion. And sometimes we have all been under a delusion uh, that's why the veil must be ripped. In the uh, end, all nations become the Lord's and the end of that. True story. Scroll of the 70. The 70 disciples, other than the first 12, they then started to fall into line. So it came to pass that our anointed one who would forgive his enemies 70 times 7, 7 times, uh, 7, 7, 7, 7, that many times, would soon train and release an additional 70 disciples other than his first chosen 12 disciples. Uh, former craftsmen, tax collectors, former prostitutes, fishermen, soldiers, even some former doctors. Well, I don't know if you could be a former doctor. There was doctors in the midst and some lawyers had walked away from their prior occupations when he called them by their name. For he called each one of them by their own name in love. And his call was beyond uh, a language for his kindness was something that the deaf uh, could hear and the, the blind could see, uh, just his loving way towards everyone. And there was never any question that Jesus wanted some repentant sinners in his midst, since he was the great physician and that his doctrine would had helped such sickened souls to heal as if they were patients living within a supernatural hospital not built by super supernatural uh, hands, um, not by human hands, but by the, the hands of heaven would do that. And so there was a retrospective uh, about Christ's start, though, in the Spirit. And um, it was clear to see that even back when Christ, Christ's brother, whose name was James, 
Uh, even when he, James was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. For Jesus was a walking miracle brought forth as a glow, gorgeous star, a glow for Jehovah's most shiny glory. And the foundations of that mediator of a new covenant, a kingdom age covenant at the end, the foundations were laid by that father of great illumination of love because he was predestined to be established as the vineyard of earth's only true, true, the earth's only true prosperous vine. That was he. For our most high Lord set his root well by watering it, by fixing it, by blessing it most abundantly by his word. And God above also decreed that his very best tender fruit would forever be exceedingly ripe and sweet. Christ alone was able to enlarge his own space. And that well-anchored root of Jesse not only uh, struck down deep with his words that were aflame with the power of change and the energy of the Big Bang were there because people believed that he knew what he was talking about by the way he lived. But he grew not we weary though at all while springing up and spreading out till he was full, full and enlarged and full of vim and vigor and an overflowing ministry had Christ for all people of love. And the Lord God uh, alone was glorified in Christ's planting and was most proud of the tenderness was God of his imp impassional roots, which were like none other. For they came forth the roots of love being far stronger than the thickest of rope that the Almighty's uh, one's love had strengthened, Stre strengthened by a three cord strand of peace, love, and hope. Against such there is no law, and only uh, the only darkness is ignorance alone. And he preached all that and told them that by the blessing of the lips of the seed of the beautiful planting of his son's incredibility arose strong. He arose strong as a cedar of Lebanon by his most powerful hand. And the word that he spoke that echoed uh, the power of the ages through his most whispering command. And by the discovery of his planting would humanity evermore stand completely in awe because of the thought of his unfathomable mind and his, his deeds. Many things were ahead. And nor did James ever foresee the exciting day just ahead when he would actually be teaching his, his half-brothers new recruits, new members of his earth-changing 70 disciples who were set apart from his chosen 12. So joining James the Righteous were the evangelist Mark of uh, Bethel and Luke of Syria, who would later on write Gospels of Christ overflowing glory bearing their names and then came Simon the son of Cleophas and then Barnabas uh, he was the latter companion of Paul and their faith within our Lion of Judah was most devoted and most beautiful for just as lions live in groups called prides they were very proud to be part of his most incredible pride and it was a diverse group of people were joining all together. So it soon came about that Justice, uh, the um, eventual uh, bishop of uh, Elatropolis, additionally came forth, singing some exalted songs of the Lord's highest praise. He came along with Thaddeus of uh, Adesia and uh, Anias, who, who would turn out to be the future bishop of uh, Damascus, but not to be uh, outdone. The Lord's future martyrs, uh, Stephen and Philip the Evangelist, also were in that group. Uh, he was the eventual bishop of uh, Asia Minor, who unexpectedly came forth singing harmonious palms, psalms of worship, which ascended so high and sweetly unto the ear of Jehovah Sidkenu, who was their righteousness. And after their songs of exaltation of God's love, 
were sung because they knew that those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. It then came about that uh, P Pietrus, he sang a, a brand new chorus of his own, which sooner or later would be su sung uh, in Nicodemia uh, with all of his dedicated heart uh, unto multitudes. And even uh, Tim Timon, the deacon, he lovingly came forth, humming ever so happy happily as Parmenius, his brother, encouraged him uh, to let his melody to be heard all throughout Judea. And they sent then prayers unto heaven, and many supplications were thereby rising up from the midst of those seventy. So it was additionally a solemn time of the consecrated prayers as Philemon of Gaza bowed his head and realized his fondest blessings as he took great loving care in washing both of his master's feet. And all of those uh, men of discipline sat most amazed when Christ taught them that every child of obedience should first bind their own flesh through prayer in order to hear God's velvety voice of love so that nothing of their carnal nature of unforgiveness could inhibit the voice of the presence of his love in action in motion. So he therefore instructed them all to be always silent before him with their heads reverently bowed when he was teaching love and because he was love and he walked in love and he taught, breathed, eat, slept, drank, love. And his teachings were mesmerizing. And as our Lord of Kings and King of Lords spoke, uh, his word did have the power of the universe. And um, great uh, were the, his words to the ears of new disciples like Tabitha uh, or Artemis or Fortu Fortunatus, uh, who were always fated to be completely spellbound as the word of the Lord proceeded from his mouth as the lightning to shake the uh, circle of the earth silly from the rest of the creation until the end uh, thereof. And for uh, even Yeshua's so softest whispers, they transcended all that was because they were utter truth. So he then declared to all 82 of his followers, his set apart 12 and his other uh, 70, that they should all realize that the holy breath cannot be seen with mortal eyes, nor could men ever see the Holy Father Christ's exact image, but yet they could plainly see him. But the teaching that really grabbed all of their attention was that Jesus rightly proclaimed that since man was made in God's image, he that looks into the face of man looks upon the image of God who speaks within him. And therefore it was a wondrous hour when the new disciples Aquilia and Achaeus uh, sense most strongly uh, that when a man honors another man, he honors God, and what a man uh, does for another, he does for our Lord of love. So it was time to, for imagining an action that makes it actually real. And at the same time, uh, they bore in mind and they carefully considered the truth that when a man harms in thought, word, or deed, either way, he additionally does wrong unto God as well uh, as they walk lovelessly. Anything opposing love is in opposition to God who is love. So that was then a blessed season of countless blessings, a blissful time of gratitude, as well as a powerfully packed period when Christ's faithful few were singing their most loving hymns ever so joyfully and playfully, as many smiles quickly turned unsightly frowns right upside down, faster than anyone ever could have kept track of or ever even have imagined. So it then came about to everybody's delight that uh, Onifrius of Cyrene and uh, Sosthenes of Colophon could then strongly relate to the teaching of that precious cornerstone about goodwill as he taught. For Jesus had declared that if anyone served God who speaks within hearts, all they really need to do was to serve their near of kin. 
uh, to serve those that aren't. Uh, the stranger at their gates, to serve even their foes who seeks to do them some kind of harm, even emotionally or physically. Love them anyways. That was the word of change, the challenge that's before all men evermore, even now today. So it's time to stressing that men should become smart, especially in the days of the latter day Daniel when the wise shall shine as the stars fearfully and wonderfully as they were created to be. But back in those ancient of days as our uh, Lord Christ stood tall amongst men, as that son of the brightest rainbow spoke his word of transformation and transcendence with his love, both Apollo, Apollos of Caesarea and Tychius, the son of uh, uh, Epidariitis, he also understood that Emmanuel was then teaching them all how to be sensible and how to be logical as they went forth in his holy name of love, ministering unto any lonely widows or visiting uh, needy orphans. And as, as, they, um, as they took heed of what he said, the Lord then urged them all to also take time with those who are needy time, take time to comfort their fellow servants of God in the middle of their afflictions, to have compassion, to have love, to go with that flow. But then that son of the morning stressed as well that every child of the Most High should welcome all people. Some of those disciples felt pretty ashamed. Uh, then the newest disciples named Rufius of Thebes and Herodian of uh, Hyperna and uh, Felagod, uh, the future birth, uh, bishop of Marathon, they all abruptly found a bit of shame because of Christ's words, because they had never really been friendly enough to be hospitable to people. They were always hugging the wall and just not being agreeable today. Leave me alone. Give me some space. <laughs> but uh, especially cold shoulders had they given much to, unto strangers. However, Hermes of uh, Philopius, he comforted uh, them anyways with hugs and laughter. And they were all having a good time talking after Christ, especially after he was all done. But along the way, they were learning and their smiles were being turned inside out from frowns. They became beautiful smiles at hearing Christ's word of charity. Uh, and he spoke about many times of, from the seasons of his earliest memories, and people valued his insights. Uh, so nor could any of that multitude help cracking some grins when Jesus actually told them uh, that in, uh, in, in hospitality, in uh, that benevolence from time to time has its rightful place. Uh, it's, there's a good time to be hospitable and just giving. Forgiving is a gift unto any hearts, he taught, that are willing to give away blessings as they're, as people willingly receive them. For he stressed that love is not even love until it is given away. And love only seeks more of itself. Love is all in all. And uh, that living power of God also emphasized that his brethren should always be tranquil while being anxious for nothing as they show themselves approved unto God by diligently learning all they could about the truest spiritual truths of love whom he was in the flesh, Emmanuel God with us. And he was, he was, uh, the teaching he did was replacing the law because it was the uttermost law of love if people obeyed it. All the law is satisfied within love for the Lord knew and he taught that if, if spiritual food of godly scripture is filling up a man, then the law quickly becomes of no importance to him because his will becomes as God's and he then desires to live the purest life humanly possible. Unfortunately, though, there were also times when Jesus had to uh, rebuke his own and it was therefore a, a real sad moment for Nar Narcissus of uh, Athens a palace of uh, 
Herculon and uh, Aristobulus when that man from Galilee taught them. Uh, oh, he actually caught them doing something not so loving. And uh, after forgiving and forgiving them, though, he, he told them that he did have their backs, but he cautioned them to respect his face of God's authority and not to be uh, mockers of unforgiveness and uh, uh, mockers of forgiveness, rather. So to walk with the program of love evermore. But for the most part, such uh, chastisement from the Lord was really rare, much to the d delight of Silius of Corneth, Silvanus, and uh, Crescens as well, who were some of the other of his disciples. And uh, so it was time that um, it was a new day and the mission was the great commission of love and transformation by love and transformation by forgiveness. And uh, that transcended all of religion and that's why it was hated so much. And uh, that's why any true person of love will face much rejection because people can't understand the language of love. <laughs> it's, it's repulsive to them. It really is. It took me a long time to really get to the, where I see that so clearly. It's like if you're not a person of love, there's a magnet away from love for you. Don't do it. Don't do it. You end up in not good places. So, love from love. Look to him alone. Only he will give us the right direction that love cannot stir us from. And uh, I wish you all of the Lord's blessings from Canada. As the prophecy of uh, Isaiah 41 correctly foretold, for the messenger unto Jerusalem, who I am, Daniel of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Bye for now. Love you. Ciao.